Hello, I'm here with Aude Le Dubé. She's the owner of the bookstore Etat de Steel in Montreal. And today we are going to be talking about the state of bookstore, local looks, uh, bookstore in the times of COVID and how do they manage to fight against Amazon. So first of all, Aude, thank you so much for welcoming me here. Well, thank you for coming. So, Aude, can you just give us a little bit of information about your background? Uh, it, what was the series of events that lead you towards becoming a, uh, a bookstore owner? Okay, I spent most of my life writing. writing. So that answers your question. Uh, I did everything that you can do to make a living out of writing. Translating, writing novels, copywriting, uh, and working in PR, trans writing press releases, and anything that would uh, kind of uh, allow me to live off my uh, craft. Yes. So, uh, books are always in your background. You're always surrounded by books if you are always. writing. Always. Right. I don't feel good if I'm not. Oh, great. <laughs> and how did you become a, a local bookseller? I didn't. I, I'm kind of wondering why I never thought of it before. I thought more about writing books uh, than I thought about selling them. To me, um, that's what I was going to do. And... Um, so there was one thing I wanted to do in my life, which was I love fashion. Okay. And I decided late in life that I'm going to have my fashion line. Your fashion line? Yeah, and four you or five years ago. Okay. And I designed it, and um, I um, was pretty proud of myself. Started the store, and it went really well. Okay, so this store was a fashion yes. store? Yes. For a little while. For a little while. And okay. I thought I was doing pretty well, except this is not my line of business, right. you know. And it's, uh, you have to deal with uh, all kinds of uh, problems when you are designing. It's not like writing a book. You write it and you put it out in the world. A fashion line you have to do twice a year. And there is a whole lot of steps before it's hanging in your store. So it was fine, it was working well, but during then COVID, okay. COVID happened. And uh, I had a few books in the store because as I told you, I can't live without books. So I had books on design, art, fashion, and uh, we, <clears throat> we had some on our online store. And uh, I saw that people wanted them. You know, I had a few orders. And uh, I did what everybody did during the lockdown. I really asked myself what I wanted to do. Right. And, you know, was I happy in my life? And did I want to go back to it the way it was? And the answer was no. The answer was, I don't want to learn a new craft. I don't want to deal with people. And who don't think I'm a professional in designing clothes or, and I said I'm going to do what I know how to do. Okay, so you pivot into yeah. a local bookseller <laughs> as soon as uh, COVID started. Well, or more not, or less. Yeah, during well, it took a little while to come to that conclusion during the lockdown, but when we were allowed to reopen, that my m mind was made. And uh, I, had, I have a wonderful, wonderful wholesaler in Toronto, and we work very well together. And she follows me in my wide arc of buying, which is basically um, all over the place, all over the world. And she is excited that I am not uh, a conform conformist. So... Wow, that's very interesting. <laughs> and can you tell us what is it like to run a local bookstore on times of COVID? I mean, you didn't run it before COVID, so I guess you cannot give us the... Uh, the yes, I did. Okay. I, I did have art design books, okay. you know, like coffee table books and, uh, 
Oh, a few books on design. Right. That were not coffee table books. And so, and people were interested. Right. And I knew that. And I knew that I was going to expand the bookstore anyway. But what happened um, when I reopened is uh, first just... Uh, uh, a detail, small detail. I'm the only uh, English bookstore on the plateau in this neighborhood. Right. Okay. So uh, just for the listeners, we are in the province of Quebec, which is a French, uh, a Fran a francophone province, and of course we live in a very diverse neighborhood. There is all kind of ethnicity here, and you are the only English bookstore in the plateau. First of all, I, I like to come back uh, to talk about that. But as far as running the bookstore on times of COVID, the traffic is not that high, or or, or it's people, really good. People are people, people are finding a lot of affair with books now that they are locked down. Yeah, they came, well, I think that really during the lockdown, everybody had the same process. Everybody, we, I'd, I'd, well, if there is one per person who didn't, I'd like to know him or her because I've never met someone who didn't re-examine their life in right. the light of COVID. Right. And uh, young people, very young you know, come to the store, the traffic is very high. And uh, what I think is the m most exciting about my customers is they, they are looking for demanding books. They read hard books. They don't want the easy airport I see. bookstore mm, okay. book. They're looking for depth. And... Um, and so they keep me on my toes because <laughs> uh -uh. I have to find new books that will that 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 they will like. Right. So yes, there is there has been I think two things they they wanted to escape they want to escape uh, screens. Right. Okay. Great. And they want to get out of the house because most of them work from from home. So. Coming to a bookstore is like coming to someone else's home with a terrific um, library. <laughs> right, okay. And, and another thing is um, Amazon. Okay. Uh, they, they don't want it. They don't want it. Why? I think they realized, m m most people, we knew that before. But now they realize that uh, if they want... Uh, small businesses around them, and we are anchored in the neighborhood. Right. You know, they they want to be able to just open the door and say hi. Right. You know, they want to be to belong, and it's not with a brown package with a smile on it. Right. That right. They're gonna succeed. So yeah, so they don't want the neighborhood to die, and and the only way to keep the neighborhood alive is just to support the local businesses, the local restaurant, the local bookstore, the local, uh, I don't know, uh, yeah, all the little businesses that give the, give this life to the neighborhood. Yes, and also the algorithm. We are, I don't know if you've seen the social dilemma, but I think it's made an impact on a lot of my customers. You know, the fact that you are identified to an algorithm, by an algorithm, that your tastes are defined by a machine is very unsettling. Yeah, there is no r chance for random encounter or learning things that are not part of your profile. Exactly. When I see the book, and I go to Amazon a lot because that's where I get sometimes, you know, an idea about books that I'm right. going to order. and. Um, and when I see what they are coming up with, that the books I might like, I said, who's that person? <laughs> it's not me. Okay, so, so in, other, in other words, uh, of course, having these random encounters with things that you did not suspect is, is better for, for, for us overall to broaden our spectrums of things that we can learn and, and, and just be aware of. 
and the human touch. The human touch. Oh, that's so important. That's so you know to be able to. I have people who come and say, "Okay, find me a book." Nice. Yeah, I need. I want to. You know, I used to have a a bookseller that was that it taught me so much. Okay. You know, she was. It was back when I was living in New Jersey. And I remember before going on vacation, I would go and say, Pam, I need books that I can read on the beach, but I'm going to spend my vacation in a colder, you know, climate. So I I also need books that I can read by the fireplace. And and she would, like, prepare me seven books, I remember. You know, like murder mysteries, historical novels, uh, fiction, non-fiction, you know, there was a pine and they were perfect. Okay, and the other thing is you made it a point that this is the only Anglophone bookstore in the neighborhood. Uh, to Why do you make that decision? I mean, yeah, uh, being that everybody else is Francophone. Are you Francophone? Yes. Yourself? Okay, so <laughs> how do you came to that conclusion that the best for you or for this neighborhood what was missing was an Anglophone bookstore. Um, I've been reading in English for a long time. And um, so my first instinct was to buy in books in English. And at first I toyed with the idea of being a bilingual bookstore, but you can't do two things well. No, no. So I decided for English because, well, um, there was a market for it. Right, right. Yeah. And, and is it the case that, let's say, uh, a title comes out in, in English and is very popular, do they have, the Francophone, do they have to wait yeah. until it's translated to French, so maybe, I don't know, a couple of months or maybe a year or maybe or so? more. Okay, I see, I you see. Know, so if you want depends. to be up to the latest of what's going on in lifestyle and, and reading... Uh, then you have to be in the English market. Yes, if well, you can also. I mean, I'm surrounded uh, surrounded by seven bookstores, I French see. language see. bookstores. So if you want the latest in French, you're gonna get it get it there. Right, right. And um, I usually get very new releases. I get releases on the, I mean, books on the day they are released. Wow. Like right now we're waiting for the Obama memoirs. Yeah, yeah. And okay. uh, they'll be there on Tuesday, next Tuesday. Fantastic. And can you tell us how does a local bookseller chooses their titles? Do you look at uh, any kind of bestseller list or does your uh, supplier send you a recommendation list? How does that work? Um, I work on it every day. I read uh, the New York Times book review, the um, the New Yorker, the Guardian. I see. Um, the New York Review of Books. And I also go to um, Publishers Weekly, Weekly. And then I get my uh, newsletter from my supplier, I see. from my wholesale. And um, so I kind of combine what she has ready to be shipped to what I want to read, Nice. Uh, I want to sell. And at first it was pretty much my taste because, you know, I was starting. <laughs> yes. But now I know my customers okay. and I see books and I'm going, hmm, that they might like. They might like. Okay, so you know your customer. Can you describe your customers for us? No, um, well educated. Okay. I think that's pretty much what young, younger, lots of academics, um, and curious people. Right, right. Students, lots okay. of students, young professionals. I mean, it's pretty much the only thing, you know, educated, yeah. Right. And, of course, you have this love for reading yourself. Can you share with us your reading habits? You read every morning, every afternoon, how often, how Every much? morning. Every morning. When yeah. I wake up. Okay. I set the alarm two hours ahead of time, and um, I read uh, for two hours every morning. 
Okay, so can you tell something to the viewers in regards to keeping uh, the local bookstore alive? How can they contribute to that? Well, well, buy in bookstores. Be patient. You don't, you know, there is something. Uh, we're getting close to uh, the holidays. To coveting, you know, ordering a book from a bookseller. I can get books like in two days. There are recent releases. But sometimes it takes longer. And if, you know, there is something um, sickly uh, rewarding about waiting for the book that oh. you want to read. Be patient. You don't need to order it and get it, well, you know, okay. right away. But talking, coming to the store, even when, when just to browse or just to sit. Right. I encourage my customers to come here while we have comfortable chairs. And have a coffee. <laughs> I have a, well, I don't, I'm not allowed to serve mm. coffee, but um, bring your coffee, your tea, whatever you want. And just spend time outside of your head okay. and outside of your home because that's the big lesson of COVID. We need other people. We okay. need each other. Oh, the last question is, please let us know the name of your store, where is it, and where can people find it in the internet as well? Okay, it's in Montreal. It's in a charming neighborhood called Le Plateau, and it's the address is 351. Duluth Avenue East, the and uh, it's a corner store with big windows, lots of light, and uh, happy people in it. Friendly customer <laughs> service, and the name again? Etat de Style. Etat de Style. Oh, thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you for making it so stress-free. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Bye.